Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna look at this. What is this? It is the Super Console X5 Pro, and it is the latest from KinHank. Now, KinHank did send this over to me for purposes of review. I have said no to KinHank for years now, but finally, I'm like, you know what? I will check out one of these Android boxes. Now, I have purchased these on my own before. This one was given to me, but I'm always kind of, you know, leery of these kinds of things this is an android box not that that is from china it is not licensed software and uh they also have a reputation for potentially loading software on here that you don't need or could potentially cause harm so that's just a that's just a heads up and warning there was a video by linus tech tips talking all about these android android boxes from china so kind of proceed uh, at your own risk i would probably avoid putting these on your network but they don't need to be network connected to play the game. So there you go. There's my disclaimer right there. The thing is running the latest rock chip, which is the RK3588. It's supposed to be a pretty powerful chip. I've looked at a couple benchmark websites that actually show that it's uh, more powerful in some cases, depending on what test it is, than the Nintendo Switch. So that's kind of interesting uh, to try to kind of give you a baseline. You know, whether or not you believe that or not, that's up to you, but that's what the benchmark tests say. Uh, the thing does have an Ethernet port, a, a USB Type-C, an optical port, an HDMI 2.1 port, an audio, and a power cable. When you unbox it, you get this. It also has three USB 3s. It has a standard USB and a micro SD card, as well as this. You're like, what is this? This is a SATA port that connects to the drive that has the games on it. So the games are actually all on here. There's, It's a four terabyte SATA drive with 16,000 games. Why they put this or didn't put this in an enclosure, I'm not really sure. It's literally just a SATA drive that you would typically put inside a PC or a server or a NAS device. So it's kind of interesting that they just give it to you like this and you got to just slap that thing on your table. It is what it is, but we will attach that in, in a minute and, and get this all up and running. It does come with this USB, it's actually a two, I think it's a 2.4 gigahertz dongle. So this, the controller it comes with is not Bluetooth. So you don't Bluetooth connect the controller. I was actually pleasantly surprised by the controller. So I've, I have, even though I haven't done videos on them, I have looked at these Android boxes for some time now, and they usually come with like a cheapy kind of knockoff PS2 controller, but this is actually quite the upgrade over that. It feels pretty good uh, weight wise and uh, it's not too bad. So so I'll, I'll give them sort of a, a props to trying to put something a little bit better uh, in the box. Then it has a cable for charging that controller. So you could always just plug this up to here and have it charged from the console. It has a power uh, connection for the actual device. And then there's a uh, HDMI cable, the uh, 8K HDMI cable. So uh, I don't think this thing is capable of 8K, but it does have an 8K <laughs> or it says it does. It says it's 8K, whatever. And then there is a remote control. Now this remote control is so that you can use streaming services with it. But what, like I said, I would probably not connect this thing to a network just to be, just for precautionary measures, just in case there's anything on here that you don't want getting out into your network and the device doesn't require it, so why bother? So yeah, there you go. That's all the stuff you get in the box. I'm sorry I didn't unbox the box. I actually had it unboxed, and I, a whole bunch of shenanigans happened around here, so I, I decided, let's just skip the unboxing part, but this is everything that you get inside the box. So let's hook it all up and see what this thing is all about. Okay, so we just booted up the Super Console X5 Pro, and when you first boot it up, you see this splash screen, but it's not really obvious what you can do from here. The far left icon, if you go to that, these are all the applications that are preloaded to the Super Console X. There's a bunch of things in here. Like I said, you're gonna find streaming services, but I wouldn't advise you to put this thing on your network. I would leave it off in offline mode, which means just don't connect it to Wi-Fi and don't plug in an ethernet cable. But the application we're looking for is Pegasus. That's the front end that this thing has on it and all the emulators plug into that. Now keep in mind, 
Pegasus is um, open source, so you can go do this yourself if you want, really build this whole thing on your own, but you'd have to do all the work. That's kind of the point of these boxes existing because it does all the work for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick one of these tiles, we're gonna press the A button on our controller, and we're gonna pin the Pegasus app to that tile. And the reason why is because the next time we boot it up, we can just click on that and it'll go right into uh, the front end, which we can then load all our games. Uh, so this does take a little while. So right now it's launching Pegasus. You're gonna you're gonna hear that four terabyte drive really spinning up, and it's loading all the assets uh, into the Pegasus emulator or Pegasus front end rather, and then you'll see all that displayed. I'm probably just gonna skip ahead because this does take probably a good 60 seconds to actually load the interface. Okay, we are now in the Pegasus front end interface, but this is what I'm gonna do. It would be impossible for me to go through all 16,000 games unless you wanna be here all night long, and I don't think you want that. So I'm gonna have a link in the description of this video to the Google Sheet, which has all of the games that are on this platform. So you don't have to sit here and go through all of them one by one, although I am gonna give you an overview so you can see what systems are on it and what games are included as more of a general overview. Let's do a little lay of the land. Up top in the interface, you see those little tabs. Those are the systems that the games are in. So in the main screen, you see the box art for that system of the tab above. If you look over to the right, you're gonna see how many games are in that collection. So that's good to know. Now we're gonna just look through this really quick. So Sega CD, there's a good collection of Sega CD. It's not the best collection, there's only 67. I don't know how you put together a Sega CD collection and not include the Marky Mark game, but they didn't do that. But there is other games that are good, such as say, uh, Sonic CD and Final Fight CD. That's another favorite of mine personally. Um, pe some people like the original Mortal Kombat, although it has some loading type issues, but it's still kind of fun. And it was a good version of it, in my opinion. Then you got Slip Heed. That's a very fun one. I like that one a lot. Then you have Starblade, another good one. So Starblade was a really good arcade game that they ported over to the Sega CD. So if you haven't checked it out, it's on here. There's a decent version of Samurai Showdown if you're a fan of that game. It's also Road Rash, although the 3DO version is definitely better. So there's a there's a decent amount here. There's there's some there's some good ones, but there's not not as much. Oh, and did I talk about the Terminator? The Terminator is great. That's got a banging Tommy Tellerico soundtrack, and you can't beat that. Everyone loves Tommy Tellerico. Go Amico. Have an Amico day. The next uh, tab is gonna be the SG-1000. I don't know a whole lot about that, so we're just gonna skip through it. We gotta keep moving, otherwise we're gonna be here for a long time. There's 800 Super Nintendo games, so lots of Super Nintendo games to be had here. Super Nintendo is pretty easy to emulate, so I don't anticipate any major problems here with Super Nintendo, but I will go through uh, some of the games one by one uh, just, just later on after we do this. So if you wanna skip ahead, I'll have chapters in the description of the video that you can skip ahead if you don't care about looking at the games. All right, Super Graphics. There's a bunch of Super Graphics games. There's 252 of those. There is a naughty section. This is what my, my friend Wicked Gamer and Collector would call this naughty. There is a Switch game. It is the limited run Contra Anniversary Collection. Uh, I would not necessarily consider this build a Switch emulator build, although there is a Switch emulator to play this, but I don't think we're gonna spend much time in there because that is naughty and that's not what we're here for. Well, this whole thing is naughty really, but it is what it is. TurboGrafx-16, 106 TurboGrafx-16 games. Now here's a game, I'm gonna make a Turbo 16 recommendation for you. One of my favorite games on the TurboGrafx-16 is Ninja Spirit. If you wanna play a badass game, Ninja Spirit is where it's at. We will be playing that a little bit later, though, because I want to show you it because it is pretty freaking epic. And of course, everyone always remembers Splatterhouse was on the TurboGrafx-16, and it's such an arcade accurate port, and it looks great. So lot, lots of great games. Don't forget Legendary Axe. Don't sleep on Legendary Axe. Very good game. There's 106 of them if I didn't say that already. Uh, there is TurboGrafx CD. There's 45 of those. There's Virtual Boy. I don't know why you'd want to play Virtual Boy games, but if you're curious, they're, they're in here. Um, yeah, it was like early days VR. It was all red, kind of goofy, but to each his own if you like it. The Nintendo Wii, there's a ton of Nintendo Wii games. I did notice a little bit of issues with button mappings for Nintendo Wii. I also did notice you are gonna need the manual. Normally I throw these manuals out, but all the hotkeys to get out of each emulator and to put up the menu for each emulator is slightly different. So you're gonna need this, don't throw it away. You will need it, uh, but the Wii games, 
I did play Tatsunoku versus Capcom. There was some slowness in there. There was definitely some issues playing it. So the Wii emulation is not perfect on this thing. Uh, so I did notice that when I played Tatsunoku versus Capcom, which is a, a great fighting game. I'm not very good at it, but I love it. And I have no idea. I did not know anything about the Tatsunoku universe, but the game is pretty fun. Wonder Swan, I don't personally care, but they're in here. So if you like that, that's cool. Sharp 68,000, that's in here. There's This is the all games folder. So if you want a full count, it's 16,164. This is your last played. So if you start going through the list and obviously with 16,000, there's a lot here, at least you can go back to the last played and it'll show you the ones that you played. You can also favorite games. There's a 3DO collection, but it's not great. There's not that many games. There's a lot more, ga more games for the 3DO. There's also a lot of dookie games for the 3DO, but uh, you know, they did put Samurai Showdown, which is good. They did put Gex. You know, they put some basic stuff. Everyone loves the version of Road Rash on the 3DO. To me, it's the, it is the definitive version. But, um, and uh, the Street Fighter 2, the Super Street Fighter 2 port to this is actually pretty good. Uh, and it was the one that had that goofy controller. I actually did a video on it at one point on my live channel, which doesn't really uh, do much on it anymore. You got the Nintendo 3DS. I did not really play the 3DS. So if you like it, there's 482 3DS games. So that's great. I might have to go explore in there because I don't know if you have any recommendations of good 3DS games that are just epic and you need to check out, let me know. Atari 2600, Atari 5200 and 7800. There's a decent amount of those. So my personal favorite, I think is on the 5200. I don't know if it's in here. I like Food Fight. But I can't remember if the good version of Food Fight was on the 52 or the 78. I cannot remember. But if Food Fight's in here, I'll be pretty happy myself. But I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't see it initially. We, we don't have time. We don't have time to go through all this. Again, that's what the Google Sheet's for. All right, you got the 7800. I swear it was the 78. I don't remember. There it is, Food Fight. That's it. It was on the 7800. I always thought 5200, but it was really the 7800. I had a friend that had a 7800. We played the crap out of Food Fight. Great game, by the way. Uh, arcade, and that port's pretty good. The Atari Jaguar, not a system I grew up with. I did play some of the games like Cybermorph at, a, at conventions and stuff. I know there's Doom and they've had to crop it in. There's some goofy stuff about this system. I think if anything, Curiosity makes me want to check this out, but um, it's here. The Atari Lynx, I played a lot of Atari Lynx as a kid, and one of my favorites was their version of California games. But the cool thing about the Atari Lynx is Atari did a good job porting over some of their most popular franchises. So you have, you know, you have a hide, or, or not franchises, but arcade games. Hydra was a cool arcade game that I don't know if there was any other ports of that. Pit Fighter, Paperboy. See, they really did a good job. Road Blasters, Rampage, like they, they kind of nailed it when they created a lot of these games. Rygar, I mean, there is some good games on the Atari Lynx and the, the system was decent powered, so they look pretty good. Anyways, we'll skip through there. A Thomas Wave, Demolish Fist. You want an, you want an Atomus Wave recommendation. If you like side-scrolling beat-em-ups, this game is badass. I have played it on my channel many times. I love it. Uh, Dirty Pigskin Football is another good one. And a favorite of mine is also Dolphin Blue. That one has kind of gained popularity over the years as a Thomas Wave emulation has kind of taken off. So um, that's also one that people like. ColecoVision, didn't grow up with it. Had a friend that had it, uh, didn't play it that much. I want to say I played like some Smurf game on the ColecoVision, if I remember correctly. I don't know, but it's here if you like ColecoVision. Now you get into some good stuff. With Arcade, you got Capcom CPS1. There really aren't any bad CPS1 games, in my opinion. They're all really good. And most of the ones you're going to want to play are in here. CPS2 games are also in here. I don't know why, I could have sworn that Third Strike is CPS3. So I think some of these might be organized incorrectly, but they do have Third Strike again in CPS3. So um, I could be wrong on that. I've never owned any CPS3 arcade games, but um, I'm pretty sure that was CPS3. Anyways, then you have Dreamcast. Lots of Dreamcast games, 324 of them to be exact. So it's a pretty good collection. I love the game Cannon Spike. It's in here. There's a lot of great, there's a lot of, Dreamcast was an awesome platform. So to me, uh, it was like the last, probably one of the last game systems I really got deeply into. And so there's there's a lot of really good games here uh, for you to check out. Gaunt, the, the Gauntlet Legends version on here is really good. So we don't need to go through all of them, but, but man, lots of good games on Dreamcast. You can't really go wrong. So if you've never explored the Dreamcast, that's cool. Final Burn Alpha, so they have the arcade games separated 
between the final burn alpha emulator and and mame so they have both of them in here so you can you can pretty much find a lot of arcade games in here although i would say this build is really more heavy about the modern the more modern of the retro systems like there's a definitely a lot of gamecube games there's 623 of them so lots of gamecube games to keep you busy here game gear so you got a lot of game gear games if you're into the portable systems game boy game boy advance you got game boy color sega genesis there's a lot of sega genesis games 932 you know we'll be playing some streets of rage then you got mame so like i said most of the arcade games are really split up between mame and final burn alpha emulators so if you're looking for the arcade stuff that's where you'll find that sega master system msx Nintendo 64, I played a couple, I tested out a couple of N64 games. The button mappings were a little bit off on the Nintendo 64, but you can go into all these emulators and set them yourself. So if you find something's not working right, you can, you can set it yourself. I'm just one of those guys that I really have a hard time playing N64 games without the original controller. So that's just me, but whatever, they're in here. So if you want to play them with this controller, you certainly can. Bunch of Naomi games. So between Naomi and Dreamcast, they really have that covered. Uh, the Nintendo DS, the Neo Geo, Neo Geo CD, NES, Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color. This is where this build really, th this is really what defines this build. They talk about and boast that the PlayStation 2 plays exceptionally well on this platform. I did notice a couple of little glitchy things on a couple of the games I tried, so I wouldn't say it's perfect, but the RK3588 does do a pretty good job with the PlayStation 2 game so if you if you've ever used any of these prior android boxes they did not do a good job when it came to ps2 it would really bog down wouldn't play very good frame skipping all sorts of stuff nasty stuff that just makes the games unplayable but they do seem to be pretty playable at least the ones that i did try uh and like i said they continue the heavy hitters on the playstation they go with the psp and then you have the psp mini um and then the traditional PlayStation, you get 1,826 places. So if you're a PlayStation fan in general, whether it be the portable, uh, the PSP, PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2, this build has a lot for you uh, in, in it's already all here and ready to go. If you're a Sega fan, the Sega Saturn, they got 306 games. I did try a couple of the Sega Saturn games. Um, the ones I did try played, played well. There was no major problems with them. So just, uh, you know, but I'm sure they're not all going to be perfect because like these builds go there's always some problems here and there but the ones i did spot check played pretty well the genesis 32x played well i actually played virtue racing i played doom and i played afterburner this is like one of my favorite console versions of afterburner because they got the music right the graphics are pretty much dead on to the arcade so i, I thought the 32x version was good and that's it that's the whole thing in in as in 12 minutes about so i did that in 12 minutes so I, we went through as many games as we could in 12 minutes but now we're gonna play we're gonna show you some games see how this thing plays because at the end of the day if you're gonna invest some money into this thing you gotta know do, does it actually play the games well okay here's the deal before we get started curiosity killed the cat i got excited and i was like you know what i'm just gonna build a little private network real quick and i'm gonna slap these things on here and i just want to see how the steam link works it should work in theory. It should be really easy to do, but I have a slower network. It's really running off of this um, this little Wi-Fi box here. So it's like one of those personal Wi-Fi hotspots, but it does see my ROG ally. I just want to see if I can run a game just to see how it's going to work. Now, keep in mind, network latency is going to probably be pretty high on this, but I just want to see if it works. Again, I'm not recommending that you put this on your network or anything. So if you decide to do that, that's on you. That's on you, bro. So, uh, so yeah, let's just see if it loads up and, and we can play a game. It'd be pretty cool if we could. This is on a really slow network, guys. So if it even works, it just proves that it would work really good on your local Wi-Fi network. But there's also, I don't know what that app is called, but the app for Xbox to really stream your Xbox stuff is also on here, so. All right. Not bad. I mean, think about it. I'm on some weak Wi-Fi, and it's actually doing okay. Okay, get. I don't want that on. I know how to play the game, dude. Get out of here. I know what I'm doing there, pal. Okay, I race all day. Oh, whoops, I wasn't pressing the gas. That would help. Hey, I'm going so slow. 
Whoopsie. All right, come on. Let's just do a quick, it's just a quick, oh, 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 oh. All right, that's fine. Don't even worry, don't even sweat it. We're good. We're good, man. We're, the, the, we're totally defeating the purpose of this video right now. This is not what we should be doing. We had other things to do. Let's just get first place first, just to feel good about myself. And then we're back. Yeah, baby. All right, let's get back to this regularly scheduled program. Let's go. All right, we're gonna rip through a bunch of games here. This is Road Rash on the 3DO. This ran really good. You can see in the top right corner on most of these games, it's gonna show the frames per second and the frame rate stayed really good during this game. And this was just one of a few 3DO games that I checked and most of them played pretty well. Moving on, this is the 3DS. I don't claim to know anything about the 3DS, but this was a game that supposedly was popular. It seems to play okay, so. I did spot check a couple other 3DS games and they seem to be fine. So I'm guessing that system wasn't really that demanding. So this processor has no problem playing a game like this. Now, this is where the fun ends is Atari Jaguar does not play well. You can hear the stuttering. And uh, yeah, overall, I don't know if this is just typical for Atari Jaguar emulation. I never really emulate this system because it's not one I'm all that interested in. The Thomas Wave plays pretty good. I did notice the frame rate's about 30 on this. I can't remember, to be honest, if this is normal for this game, but it didn't feel slow to me. Okay. This hardware did have, like, slowdown issues at times with certain games, but this didn't seem abnormal to me. TurboGrafx-16, Ninja Spirit, the game I was telling you about. This game is great, plays awesome. There is zero problems with TurboGrafx. It runs all those really great, so... um. At least I, I tested probably 10 or 12, and all of them seem to run really well. So no issues with TurboGrafx-16. Atari 7800, I had to do pole position too. Game played fine. Uh, there was a couple things where I don't know what the frame rate was for this, but it seemed to be like locked around 50, which seems fine for this. I mean, that might have been normal. I'm really not sure, but it, it played well and was fun. So I'm assuming that's normal for this. Uh, one of my personal favorites, Star Fox. This played great. It was locked at pretty much 60 frames per second the whole time. Man, I forgot how much I really enjoyed this game and how much this game blew my mind when I first played it just because you didn't see graphics like this on, uh, on these 16-bit consoles, so pretty cool. This is one of my personal favorite side-scrolling beat-em-ups for the arcade, The Punisher. You cannot go wrong. This game is so awesome. I wish um, it got more fanfare. I don't feel like it really... It did gain a little bit more popularity more recently because Arcade 1UP made one uh, or put the game on one of their cabinets a while back. Here we go. There's um, Wave Race. Nintendo 64 um, is kind of a mixed bag. Some of them play great. Like, Wave Race seemed to play all right. Uh, although it, the screen is cropped in, and I'm sure that's just an emulator setting, but no issues with Wave Race. Just a couple of minor glitches. This was weird, so Need for Speed and the Nintendo Wii, for some reason the emulator saw like a player too, even though I didn't have two controllers plugged in, so I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, and the frame rates would drop every now and then. So Wii is a bit of a mis mixed bag, so you'll have to kind of go through that yourself. Metamorphic Force, a great Konami arcade. This is this is one of those games, man. I wish this game got more attention because it is awesome. It's always like X-Men and Simpsons. They get all the attention. This game should get more attention. It's pretty awesome. All right, God of War. Now, the PlayStation 2 emulator they have on here, you can play with the scaling. And uh, I have it on like 3X, I think, or 3X upscale, and it's still running at close to 60 frames per second it might dip every now and then but you can you can fiddle with that if you feel like it's not performing the way you want it to you can kind of bring it up and down but most of the playstation 2 games i played played pretty well but like i said you can kind of tweak the settings if you notice that maybe there's some frame rate slowdowns or issues like that so you have full capability to go and customize it and adjust it at, accordingly Ah, man, I do remember playing this game, and yeah, this game kind of mess is messed up, but a lot of these Rockstar games are messed up. <laughs> anyway, Max Payne played fine. The controls were a little goofy. I had to get used to it at first, but once I did, it was fine. No, no, no. 
All right, before I give my final thoughts and feedback on the Super Console X5 Pro, I thought to myself, who in the community knows the most about these products? And there's one logical choice. He is the man. He has single-handedly reviewed every emulation product from China. You know him as the wicked gamer and collector. And he's a good friend of mine, and he said, Ralph, I will tell your audience as the purveyor of emulation what's up with these Android boxes. Take it away, Wicked. Ralphie boy, you naughty boy. Thank you for having me here on the channel. Yeah, there were a lot of different game boxes and you asked me in a short, uh, yeah, this is like a couple of, let's say, second minutes to chat chat about the game boxes, the rabbit hole, the jungle of game boxes, the jungle of the packages from China. So where they call these in Super Console X game box whatsoever dual systems, in the end they are using Android boxes most of the time. Where they keep releasing new different versions, there are actually like many ways to play. Also you can build yourself one with a mini PC for not a lot of money and slap some Batasera on it. So when it comes to these, let's say, ones you have reviewed here on your channel, Ralph, man, there are absolutely so many different solutions out there and I cannot even squeeze them in these, like say, couple of minutes I'm here on your channel. The first generation was Super Console Lakes from Kin Hank with this very cool looking box that can actually play like thousands of different games with the S905 chipset. In other words, it's old stuff that you're actually using all the freaking time. With the new generation, also you reviewing over here, we have some new, let's say, specifications, but we don't have Ami Alec, for example. There's a lot of differences when it comes to these Android boxes. That's actually the reason why I just wanted to test them all out. You think this is an absolutely cool product because they have these fancy pictures on AliExpress, but actually when you're going to be plugging them in, sometimes they're absolutely pieces of garbage with horrible overall software emulation, and you cannot even do anything about it. Besides the Horwaz D cards that get corrupted automatically. I think one of the funniest things when they rip off an Xbox One or a Series X and make it a mini version, that's kind of cool. But also there they completely drop the ball with different problems like emulation and etc. Thank you all for listening to me. In the end there were so many different game boxes out there and there are a couple of good ones. Which ones are those? <laughs> Join me on the channel. Yeah, Ralphie, I'm stealing your subscribers. <laughs> Back to you. All right, guys, here's my final thoughts on the Super Console X5 Pro. I made some notes because there's a lot to go over. First of all, there's a ton of games and that has to go through consoles and arcades and everything. So there's tons of platforms to keep you busy for a long time. Now, typical with these Android boxes, they have a lot of duplicate games. This one, it looks like they did a good job curating the list and making sure there weren't as many duplicates. There's a few, but not like some of those other boxes that say they have 120,000 games and it's like 25 versions of Street Fighter 2. It's not like that. So that's actually a good thing. The external four terabyte drive is a little bit of a concern only because it's not in any kind of enclosure and it gets really hot. So if you were gonna have that on like a wooden surface, it is at least a concern. Whether or not it would cause a long-term issue, I'm not really sure. Something I should at least pass along to you guys. The Pegasus front end is really cool. You can obviously do that yourself. It is DIY, so keep in mind, what are you really paying for when you buy for one of these? You're paying for people's time to put something together. Because keep in mind, with the amount of games on here, the amount of time it would take you to download them, locate them, you know, figure out which emulators work with what, it would be very time consuming. So if that's not something that you're into, then that's kind of what the value of these builds really are. The cost for the thing isn't too bad. It's $329.99. There's gonna be a coupon code in the link of this uh, video or the description of this video where you can maybe save a little bit of money, take it down to more like $300 or close to that. The RK3588 chipset is actually really good. I was surprised. It could even play some Switch games Keep in mind, I don't condone that. A lot of that stuff and a lot of those games are still available to, to buy and support today. So that's kind of a little bit of a shady gray area in my opinion. So I didn't show them, but I did add some games and it does play them pretty well, to be honest. So it's using that Yuzu or Yuku or whatever the heck it is emulator that people use these days for Nintendo Switch. Uh, but again, not something I'm like a big supporter of. Um, I'm kind of hung up on the hard drive thing. So I actually took the four terabyte hard drive and cloned it to an SSD. Now keep in mind that really does kill the overall value of it if you were to do that. Cause even a 3D NAND SSD drive is still for four terabytes, probably like 200 bucks for a cheap no name one. So that's not worth it, but I'm just saying if it was a concern and you didn't, you had the cash to burn, you could clone that drive, which I did 
And uh, it didn't really cut down on load times much, but it did actually, uh, you know, it's dramatically cut down on the heat because really with those SSD drives, it doesn't generate much heat. That's kind of it, man. You know, I think the, the last thing I'd mention is with solutions like CoinOps and all these mini PCs taking off, this is something you can absolutely build yourself. But I understand the reason why these products exist is because a lot of people don't want to go through that time and effort to do that. Don't buy this thing thinking you're going to plug it in. Everything's going to be hunky-dory. There are some issues here and there, just like with all these Android boxes. And keep the freaking manual. I always throw those manuals away, but the manual has a lot of information about the hotkeys they've set for each emulator. If you're already familiar with a lot of emulators and RetroArch and stuff like that, then you can still go in and customize all those things. So if you find a game not quite playing right, you can uh, you know, enable frame skipping or lower the amount of um, scaling you're doing on the game. It might not look as good, but it might perform a little bit better. I didn't run into too many performance issues, but they do exist and it's impossible for me to test every game. That's kind of all I had to say about it, guys. If, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. Put your comments below. Don't forget to check the description because there will be some coupon codes. And that's it for now, guys. We will see you on the next one.